Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and did Wilson Fisk Kingpin buy Avengers Tower? Let's look deeper into the post credit scene for the Echo series and what Marvel Studios executives have promised about the Avengers Tower mystery to see what Wilson Fisk's next moves will be for Daredevil Born Again, for Thunderbolts, Captain America Brave New World, and everything on the street level of the MCU in Phase 5. Is Wilson Fisk's upcoming mayoral race really setting the stage for a White House bid? God help us. Hey, by the way, all five episodes of Echo were broken down with amazing attention to detail by Jessica Clemens on this new Rockstars channel. Be sure to give those a watch. Okay, the Echo series ends with Wilson Fisk being defeated in his fight with Maya Lopez in the town of Tamaha, Oklahoma. As Maya accessed the power of her Choctaw ancestry and shared it with other women in her family, her grandmother Chula and her cousin Bonnie. And Maya used this specific gesture. It seems to begin to heal some of the trauma in Fisk's heart from his childhood bedroom as he would listen to his father abusing his mother. This post credit scene shows Fisk's back on his private jet headed back to New York. I want a meeting with all the remaining heads. We need to stabilize this situation before it spirals out of control. Okay, before we continue with the rest of the scene, we gotta talk about these remaining heads in the Netflix Daredevil series, which Marvel executive Brad Winderbaum recently confirmed to be MCU canon. Fisk dealt with the other heads of New York City, specifically Hell's Kitchen, including Madame Gao, Nobu, Leland Owsley, and the Russian brothers Vladimir and Anatoly Renskahov. Depending on how committed Marvel Studios will be to the exact continuity of the Netflix series, all of those heads have either been dead or out of the picture for the past several years. And notice how Fisk says the remaining heads, suggesting that some have either been arrested or killed or just removed from power in the recent era. Like Wilson Fisk may have just like killed off anyone who wasn't loyal enough to him. Now we should be clear on the timeline here. Echo is set five months later following the events of the Hawkeye series. The Hawkeye series was Christmas 2024. So now we are in May 2025. And according to Disney Plus's timeline order playlist, which by the way now includes the Marvel Netflix titles of Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Defenders, and Punisher, Sure, Echo takes place before She-Hulk and before Ms. Marvel. So I'm going to assume that the heads that Fisk is now referring to are actually a shadowy cabal senior to any New York specific gangs. I think Fisk is thinking on a more national and international level. So who would these MCU heads of crime currently be? Well, of course, we got to consider power broker Sharon Carter. Madripoor got name dropped in this Echo series, but that's all stuff from Madripoor. <laughs> And Sharon ended the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, making a similar call to arms dealers to kind of circle the wagons. We also got to think about Jai Ling, current head of the Ten Rings Syndicate. There's Val. Val is the current CIA director, which is a, you know, government position, but she's clearly not operating in the daylight. She's cutting legal corners with John Walker's legal status. The fact that Val is director of the CIA is just a sign of how corrupt the U.S. government currently is in the MCU. And we got to look at Samuel Stern's The Leader, because Tim Blake Nelson is confirmed to return as the Hulk villain in next year's Captain America Brave New World. So those four, with Wilson Fisk overseeing the Russian gangs in New York from Hawkeye, would bring us to five heads. And I think this could be the MCU's Intelligentsia. And yes, I know the Intelligentsia was kind of implied to be a group based out of a silly incel website in She-Hulk, and that group of immature dudes seems to have a bit of doubtful canonicity since Jen Walters and the Kevin Robot retconned that from the end of She-Hulk, but I think there was still a real Intelligentsia that was using that website as a front so that people wouldn't look deeper into it. Because remember, we saw a high-tech lab that was spying on Jen Walters in that She-Hulk wedding episode. So where was that lab? Who was that? Could that lab be Avengers Tower? In the days before Echo's release, our friend Brandon Davis from comicbook.com interviewed Marvel exec Brad Winderbaum, who confirmed that we will at some point learn who bought Avengers Tower. I mentioned New York, I got a question I've been dying to have answered for like, I think seven years now. Am I ever gonna know who bought Avengers Tower? <laughs> Uh, Brandon, I'm just gonna honestly, yes. Yes, you will. Now, this Echo series did not answer that question, but Winterbaum didn't say that it would get answered in Echo specifically. It was just at some point. And when Maya snuck a bomb aboard the Fisk train and bombed Fisk's Brooklyn warehouse, the shots of the New York City skyline did not, as usual, include any sign of Avengers Tower, specifically in the part of Midtown Manhattan's MetLife building where the tower is supposed to be located. Now, in Jessica's breakdown, she theorized that Fisk's eyepiece tech could be a mix of Tony Stark's Edith technology and that skin grafting cradle technology that Helen Cho used in Avengers Tower in Age of Ultron. And she pointed to these as possible clues that Wilson Fisk could be the one
one currently occupying the tower. But we should also note that those things seem to be the kind of proprietary technology that Happy Hogan would have been sure to move out of the tower in Spider-Man Homecoming. But then again, as of Spider-Man No Way Home, a lot of that tech was seized by the government through the DODC, a government whose intelligence apparatus is being overseen by Val. And in Ms. Marvel, which again is set after Echo, the DODC is using Tony Stark's drones, drones that they must have confiscated and repurposed. So if Val is using her government contacts to do all of this, that could put her in the league of Avengers Tower occupants and one of Fisk's heads. But is Fisk about to take all of this public? If you're looking to ring in the new year by ringing in a new you, revamping your daily hygiene routine is the best place to start and Geology is here to help your new year's resolutions with new skincare solutions. Geology is a 29 time award winning skin, hair and body care company recognized in men's health, Oprah Daily, Hypebeast, Birdie, Esquire and GQ. Geology's products use just like a handful of powerful proven ingredients that have been trusted by dermatologists for decades. Geology can help you fight acne, reduce oilness, prevent wrinkles, combat dark or puffy under eyes, have smoother, hydrated skin and target signs of aging. I mean, is it really a new year if you don't age? I don't think so. If you don't know where to start, Geology can create a simple and effective skincare or hair care routine for you. All you gotta do is take a quick 30 second quiz. Right now, if you use code NEWROCKSTARS100, Geology will give you 100% off their award-winning skincare trial set. You'll also get an additional bonus offer of up to 30% off one skin, hair, or body product when you add it to your trial. So 100% off plus an additional 30% off? Hope you save some champagne because this is a deal worth celebrating. Click the link in the description or go to G-E-O-L-O-G dot I-E slash Rockstars 100 to get started. Because let's continue with this Echo post credit scene. Most voters want somebody who is a fighter, which works against the career politicians. A bare knuckle brawler would do well in this race, an outsider. Is that candidate even out there? Yeah, it sounds like Wilson Fisk is following in the footsteps of another Mayor Wilson. Mayor, now that's a good idea. I could run for mayor. So Wilson Fisk running for mayor is an expected move in Marvel lore. In season one of the Netflix series, he steps out of the shadows with a televised pledge to improve Hell's Kitchen. In the Devil's Reign comics, Fisk is the mayor of New York City and outlaws vigilantism and announces a run for president and forms Thunderbolt's units to enforce that agenda. In the Secret Empire comics, Fisk steps in as a last minute mayoral candidate after helping throw off Hydra's takeover of the city. So I think we are going to see a similar campaign by Wilson Fisk in Daredevil Born Again. In the this whole idea of Marvel looking into like US electoral politics is something that we saw a bit of in Secret Invasion, and I think we're gonna see a lot more in Thunderbolts in Captain America Brave New World. Brave New World is gonna deal with President Thaddeus Ross, played by Harrison Ford, with perhaps some Red Hulk drama that could create a power void in Washington, and Mayor Wilson Fisk from New York could enter that ring, and then from there, outlaw all superhero actions, except those committed by his Thunderbolts lineup, the lineup that will be in this movie, that he and Val control. So, who bought Avengers Tower? Not any one person, I don't think, but rather an organization, a team with multiple heads. Wait a minute, Hydra has multiple heads. No, I, I don't think it's Hydra. I guess it could be, but eh, I don't know. I mean, there was that episode of What If that suggested that Arnim Zola's AI was still in that Siberian facility in some form. But the forefront of this organization includes someone with US government backing, that would be Val, someone with a solid stake in Manhattan real estate, Wilson Fisk, someone with armored firepower and a ton of money, that would be the power broker of Madripoor, Sharon Carter, someone with international reach, that would be the head of the Ten Rings, Jai Ling, someone with technological savvy and the ability to spread misinformation, that would be Samuel Stearns, the leader. And there you go, Avengers Tower, I believe, is the current of operations of the true intelligentsia. Now, could Sasha Baron Cohen's Mephisto be part of that league to validate these weird rumors being claimed by some scoopers at Mephisto bought Avengers Tower? Sure, why not throw him in there? Either way, I don't think Avengers Tower was bought by one person. I think it's been bought by several working together. And I know that might disappoint some of you who firmly believe that Avengers Tower is the current base of operations of Oscorp or the Baxter building, but hold your horses. None of this is saying the tower can't in the future be reclaimed by the Fantastic Four as the Baxter building on the other side of all these conflicts in a Fantastic Four film, I just think that for that least transfer to have any meaning to us, to pack the greatest punch, we need to see that tower in the wrong hands first. We need to see Minas Tirith in Denethor's hands before the true heir of Gondor returns to take it. By the way, I'm still working on my Lord of the Rings analyses for the Deep Dive channel. It's just, you know, having a kid it makes it hard to pour through a three and a half hour extended edition, but I am working on it, I promise. Hey, please watch all of Jessica's Echo breakdowns and Tommy Bechtold and I teamed up on Sunday's sneak peek episode and we went pretty hard against Marvel's 
Studios for burying the series, in our opinion. And then meanwhile, this channel's X-Men Stick Thick Rewatch is charging forth with 2003's X2 X-Men United. That is on the channel now for you to watch and to enjoy. Subscribe to all three channels of the New Rockstars Network. You can follow me at EA Voss. Thank you to Gina Ippolito for her help with this script. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.